Greetings, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's spiritual darkness not to walk in. This Bible study is going to be on doctrine. And I've done a couple of videos on different points of doctrine. But this will be a slightly different point of view. Well, what is doctrine? Well, according to Noah Webster, who was a Christian believer and a scholar, a language scholar, this guy knew over 20 languages fluently. I mean, this guy knew biblical languages of Greek, which is what the New Testament was written in. He knew Hebrew, which is pretty much what the Old Testament was written in. He knew Latin. He knew Spanish, Italian, French, German, in, you know, yeah, the Webster, the dictionary guy. His 1828 dictionary is a, a jewel. It really is. And he oftentimes, uh, when a word was being used, he'd reference the Bible, uh, the Bible's use of the word. So what is not a doctrine? It's a noun. It's a Latin word and means to teach. Number one, in a general sense, whatever is taught, hence a principle or position in any science, uh, whatever is laid down as true by an instructor or master, the doctrines of the gospel are the principles or truth taught by Christ and his apostles. You tell me that guy's not a Christian, huh? The doctrines of Plato are the do uh, principles which he taught. Hence, the doctrine may be true or false, it may be a mere tenant or opinion. So, yeah. Number two, the act of teaching. He, Jesus, he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his doctrine. And that's in the book of Mark, chapter 4, 2. I mean, he actually quotes Mark 4, chap uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 2. Three, learning knowledge. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That's in Isaiah 28, 9. He quotes doc, uh, the Bible twice. And here we're getting to number three. The truth of the gospel in general. That they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Titus 2 and verse 1. Number five, instruction and confirmation in the truths of the gospel. 2 Timothy 3, 10. 2 Timothy 3, 10. I mean, this guy, you know, compare this to the uh, so-called Webster Bibles today. You know, huh, uh, printed by Antichrist companies. So, doctrine so there is a thing in the bible uh among bible circles where they call the uh they kind of call it the law of first mention uh it's more like a well in the king james bible generally the first time that a word or phrase is mentioned in the context will tell you generally the meaning of it so all right doctrine is found the first time in deuteronomy chapter 32 in verse 2 but i'm going to read probably about half this chapter boy i haven't even started yet and i'm at five minutes Sorry for being so long-winded, you know, but I like to start from the beginning because, you know, you never know when somebody's brand new and a baby believer and 
you, you don't, I don't like assuming that uh, people know anything. So, all right, let's go. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. Now, who is this? This is the Lord. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine, my teachings, right? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. You know, when rain hits the grass, uh, the water, you know, grass can't grow without water. And without the Lord's words and his doctrine, we can't grow either. Verse 3. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. Now, if you attend a uh, Catholic church, they'll tell you that Peter's the rock. Now, I, 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 I love Peter. He's probably my favorite of all the apostles because I can mostly relate to him. You know... But uh, he, I'm sure he's a great guy, but he's not the rock. No, the Lord's the rock, Christ. Paul even says that that uh, rock was Christ. Uh, let me look it up real quick. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul writes, now remember, the Corinthians were was the name of the inhabitants of a city-state called Corinth. It was a city in Greece. You know, if you lived in Texas, you'd be called a Texan. And if you lived in New York, you'd be a New Yorker. Or if you lived in Florida, you'd be called a Floridian. So they were Corinthians. And Paul's writing letters to them. Why? Because they were Israel. Divorced Israel, the ten northern tribes that were divorced, Jeremiah 3.8. And with the promise of the new covenant, Jeremiah 31.31. All right, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, Paul, you know, ignorance, lacking of knowledge. Paul wants to give us knowledge. He wants to give us doctrine. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What is he talking about here? Passing through the sea and the cloud. Well, if you've ever read the book of Exodus, when when Moses went uh, took Israel out of Egypt, there was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and they passed through the Red Sea, didn't they? Uh, Pharaoh's army tried that, and they uh, uh, they didn't fare so well. Yeah, they they didn't bring their swimming trunks or their bathing suits, or yeah. Yeah, they all drowned. Uh, just like the flood of Noah. Didn't work out quite that way. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul is telling these people they are of Israel. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The Red Sea. See, he's telling the Corinthians they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the Red Sea, the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. What was that spiritual meat? The instructions they got from Moses, you know, like the Ten Commandments, when he came down from the mount the, on the tablets of stone. 
But what was the uh, other, you know, uh, the manna? Could the manna be called spiritual meat? Probably not, but, you know. So let's, uh, let's start over again. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink that same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Well, guess what? They were out in the middle of the desert. They were carrying this rock around. God said to strike the rock and... Guess what? Water came out of it. Yeah. And there was probably hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, you know, this rock wasn't going drip, drip, drip. No, it, it was probably a geyser or something or other. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm old, but <laughs> I'm not that old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine? How much water would you need for a thousand people? 10,000 out in the middle of the desert. Woo, doggy. Let me tell you. So there was a rock and Christ is called the rock and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. See all the people that uh, did all the stuff that displeased God. They died. That's why they wandered in the wilderness for 70 years. Verse 6. Now these things were for uh, were our examples. Yeah, if you read the book of Exodus, God wasn't pleased with these people. Why? Because, you know, they were murmuring and complaining. Yeah, I'm so tired of eating this manna every day. It's manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner, manna for a midnight snack, manna, 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 manna. I'm sick of manna. I want meat. And God sent them quail. God even said, you're going to be eating quail until it comes out of your nose. Yeah, did you know that was an expression out, you know, uh, uh, from the Bible? You're going to do that until it comes out your nose. And the nose knows. Oh, yeah. Uh, now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be, neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Yeah, the flaming, fiery, flying serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition. You know what admonition means? Uh, when you admonish somebody, you're giving them a, a, like a reprimand. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Uh, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And if you want, you can read the rest. But yeah, I think you get the idea. All right, let's go to uh, back to Deuteronomy 32. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the timber herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish, publish the name of the Lord, Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. 
They, they, you know, them, they, have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations, and that word nations there is the same exact word that sometimes they translate as Gentiles. Sometimes they translated it as nations, sometimes as Gentiles. But it's the same word. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He separated the sons of Adam. Separated. The world wants open borders and mix everybody up. For the children of Adam, anyways. And by the way, if you don't know it, uh, in, the old, in the old Hebrew dictionaries, Adam was a racial description that only applies to one group of pe one group of people. You know the the group of people that have carried the Bible. You know, uh, were the Mongolians and the Chinese and the Japanese and uh, India and Africa were, were they the ones that carried the Bible? Uh, I don't think so. Who uh, who printed the Bible? Well, Martin Luther, Gutenberg's Press, Germany, uh, England, King James, uh, you know, the Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, John Calvin. I had to think about that. I must be getting Alzheimer's. So, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, not mixed them all up like the world wants to do, let me tell you something, people. If you want to know what the Bible says on a subject, look at what the, Lord, uh, look at what the world says about a subject and do the opposite. Or look and do the opposite, yeah. And you'll know. Oh, the world says, oh, we're pro-choice. Abortion's okay. Well, you know the Bible says, thou shall not kill. You know, when the world says uh, open borders, you know, we're all world citizens. Uh, that's not what the Bible says. When he separated separated the sons of Adam. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob. Uh, who was Jacob? He was the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. When you see Jacob, think Israel. When you see Israel, think Jacob. Same thing. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Um, by the way, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 4. I think Proverbs was, uh, memory serves me correctly, Proverbs was written by Solomon, the son of da King David and was considered the wisest man that ever lived. Of course, he fell there for a while. Uh, I think he had like a thousand wi uh, wives or concubines, which is, the concubine's like a, like a second wife kind of deal. It's not a full wife, 
but he, you know, it's like uh, friends with benefits kind of thingy. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, can you imagine having a a dozen women arguing with you at the same time? Uh, I, ugh. I think I would commit suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter four. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Uh, you know, there's more to living than just the physical flesh. I and mean, this is like spiritual living. You know, live forever, eternal life. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. You know, don't walk away from the words of God's mouth. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Verse 6. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Now, what in the world are we talking about her? Her? What is this? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Do you know that wisdom here is being uh, likened unto a her? Yeah. Do you know that the um, in the Greek, the word Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's how I, in English, maybe somebody as well-versed in Greek can uh, correct me, but uh, Sophia is uh, the Greek word, from what I understand, the word for wisdom. Yeah. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, love the Lord's wisdom, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. An ornament of grace, a crown of glory, shall she deliver to thee. Wow. Uh, grace. Yeah, we hear, you know, I've heard people say that the Old Testament is just a book of rules and regulations and judgment. There's, there's grace in the Old Testament, believe it or not. And in Genesis. Um, you know, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's in Genesis chapter 6. Noah. Yeah. So, uh, where do we find grace? Jesus Christ, right? And a crown of glory. Who's going to give us a crown of glory? Jesus Verse 10, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. 
Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Uh, better stay away from politicians, right? And TV evangelists. And I could, and car salesmen. Oh my, uh, yeah. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away lest they have caused some to fall. You ever meet, meet, meet people that love to push down others, you know? 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Compare that to the uh, Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, the, you know, the, the bread being the flesh of Christ and the wine being his, the blood of Christ. Would you rather have that or the bread of wickedness and the wine of violence? 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. I don't care if it's noontime and the sun's out. They're stumbling spiritually. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. You know, the Bible had um, dietary and health laws. And you know what? Pork is so it's it's poison basically it's so full of parasites you know yeah you can cook it but you know it's still uh it's not healthy it, it, you know it, is it oh well you eat pork you're damned forever for hell no but it's just not healthy and you know the bible said that when you uh relieve yourself you know Num going to the bathroom number two uh it said to cover you know you you bury it in the ground and you cover it this way flies don't land on it and then carry the disease back to landing on your food you know that was that was uh i mean like how long how long ago was that that was at least 4,500 years ago, or at least 4,000 years ago, the Bible said that. We didn't even understand bacteria until probably about 200 years ago or less. You know, when uh, there was a guy named Van Leeuwenhoek, 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 some guy, he was Dutch, uh, he invented the microscope. They don't even to this day know how he how he uh, did the glass to, to do a microscope. But you could see the one-celled organisms, you know, like diatoms and what have you. Uh, they don't even know if he... He might have uh, taken the glass and, and, you know, you ever seen glass blowers make bottles? He might have blown it into a mold and then let it uh, cool and then use that the glass to reflect or, re, or refract the light you know so that it would um so he could see small objects but we didn't even know about microscopic uh bacteria and stuff until those kind of things came out but the bible did the bible knew cover your thing you ever heard the expression, he doesn't have a pot to piss in? Where does that come from? Well, that comes from Old England. Uh, they used to have a, a uh, pot, and when you'd have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you'd, that's what you used. 
either number one or number two. Well, guess what? In the morning, what did they do with it? Some people just open up the window and throw it out the window. And then you're walking on the streets with all this filth. And then you track it everywhere. And then people wondered why there were out, outbreaks of plagues. Well, because people didn't follow what the Bible said to do. You take it and you bury it. You cover it up with dirt. Better the earthworms to have it than the uh, flies. And people say, oh, the Bible's just a religious book. It's, it's a book on health, too. You know, like I say, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in any one area. And I don't claim to be. But I try to know a little bit about this and a little bit about that. And you know why they call uh, number two crap? Or why they would call the toilet the crapper? Because... The guy that invented the modern toilet, his name was Crapper, C-R-A-P-P-E-R. -P -P -E and there was a an S-valve, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the pipe where the number two would go down, it had an S. And the water would go in there and would prevent the sewer gas that would form uh, bacteria eating the the crap uh, would produce sewer gas, methane. That stuff will kill you. And it's flammable. Yeah, there were people that would go into a house and smell, you know, smell gas and they would light a cigarette and blow up. Well, I think his name was Thomas Crapper. I'm not sure. But his name, last name was Crapper. And he invented the S-valve that there was always water in it and it would prevent the sewer gas from um coming up through the 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 toilets and what have you uh, that's why that's open up open up your uh, kitchen or bathroom sinks and look under it and you'll see a, a, the the pipe will have an s valve that's why you know he invented the modern sewer type things england uh you know, sorry, we didn't go to Africa and then steal the idea. And then, yeah, it, no. So, all right, you know, I've wasted some time. Proverbs 4, uh, 22. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. See, the words of the Lord are health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. You know, froward mouth, evil, and perverse lips. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. In other words, follow the straight and narrow path. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Go straight ahead. And make sure you keep your eyes on Jesus. So, uh, wow, I, I 30 minutes and I've only done two, two things of doctrine. I'm going to break this up into smaller um, studies, I think. Because this is going to be multi-parts for sure. Um, doctrine appears how many times? Oh, doc, the word doctrine appears 50 times in the, uh, in the Bible. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing this for a little while, huh? All right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.